I started, as you remember, with the questions, what really uh, is the situation of the capability of the terror organizations in the offensive arena? Because we see during the years, and we investigate this information from 2013, we see during these years uh, a development within the global jihadist uh, and cyber capabilities in all the different layers. They have new technology, they use the internet for their operations, but we didn't see really something that say, here it is, the major development of this organization within the field of carried out an offensive attack to the cyber. And we don't know really yet uh, what is the reason. We try to search, to understand, and to find maybe discourse with people to understand why these organizations are not in this position that they can carry out a very uh, a problematic attack against uh, our target. This is the issue that I want to uh, discuss. And what we can see uh, that within the cyber arena, we are not talking only about offense, we are not talking only about defense, we are talking also about operations. Because the global jihadists that they are decentralized need the internet for their operations. So they need the internet for their operation and they need to use the internet materials or the internet platforms. Some of them are open, some of them are encrypted for their operation during the year. So we see it. Uh, uh, within the uh, a jihadi group, and you can find out that there were changes when there's a technology change, there were changes within the way that the jihadists use the internet. So this is the reason why I said that they have the ability to learn and to uh, have uh, uh, some knowledge and lesson learned from their uh, operations on the ground. So if we, go, we are going back, and my students know it very well, if we are going back to the early days of the uh, uh, 2000, 2004, 2010, and onward, and we see what the jihadists said, what was their plan from the early days, you can find out that for them, internet was a very important platform and should be used, as you can see in the slide, should be used for a discussion issues, and for hacking issues. Meaning on one hand, uh, a promoting operations by uh, using uh, the uh, a social network or by using jihadi forums to promote it knowledge and things to the people. And then to use the other component is to use the internet, the platform for attacking. This is from the early days of this organization. It was in 2004 by uh, these guys that published the uh, 39 ways to serve jihad, and it was, it continued uh, by the uh, Minister of War of the Islamic State in Iraq in 2008, in 2010, that he described targets. What we need to attack is the uh, website of the enemies, we need to attack uh, uh, the economy, we need to attack all these kind of targets that you can find within the enemy arena. And it's not only this component, they establish within the grand strategy of Al-Qaeda, they establish capabilities for training and preparing people for this kind of operation. So you ask yourself at the beginning, if this was where they were in 2004 and 2010, why they didn't uh, find, why you, didn't, you could not find in 2019 uh, a very, uh, a, strong capabilities in attacking uh, a Western uh, a target. So if I look at, on the two, an, analyzing the two major uh, organizations uh, that are dealing with the internet, meaning the old one, Al-Qaeda, is the white generation, because they started their operation during the 80s and the 90s, and they're like an old guy entering into the field of the internet. You will find out uh, that the other component, this is the, the Z generation, this is ISIS, members that are younger than, than uh, Al-Qaeda enter into this field uh, during 2014. And what we saw during the years that Al -Qaeda, uh, uh, ISIS enter into the social network before Al-Qaeda. ISIS has a social network uh, account, an official 
social network account before Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda uh, imitates the ISIS entrance into this field in the uh, uh, open, uh, uh, open uh, social network and in the, an encrypted social network. Meaning we will find out always ISIS is uh, uh, in a situation that he knows better than Al-Qaeda how to use the new technology for his uh, operation. So this is two different generations, and we see the behavior of these two different generations during the years when Al-Qaeda, uh, uh, from establishment of, of Al-Qaeda, and then from the split of ISIS from Al-Qaeda in 2014. The second major trend that we find it uh, uh, started in 2014, 2013 onward, this is the transition from the old system, meaning website, forums, into social network. This was time of the open social network of the global jihadists. And in 2015, entering into the encrypted social network meaning Telegram and all these uh, groups. This was one of the most important transitions within the global jihadists because they want to uh, secure their capabilities of operation. And one of the reasons why they uh, a, a trans a have this transition from uh, a, the uh, website and the transition from the uh, jihadi forums is because during 2013, they were attacked by, uh, their forum were attacked by Western uh, countries, and they need to find a solution. The next uh, uh, component that we see started 2015 onward, this is the use of virtual currency. It's not by coincidence uh, uh, that uh, uh, Mr. Eliao described the digital currency, it became more and more important within the strategy of the global jihadists to achieve money from their uh, people from different parts around the world. And they promoted this uh, uh, information into all the components that they can have, all the channels that they have from the level of uh, open channels to the level of encrypted channels send us money through digital currency. This is became more and more important within this field, specifically 2016, 2017 uh, uh, onward. So this is the use of the virtual currency. If I try to uh, uh, describe the major trends that we saw during 2013, 2014 within the jihadi uh, uh, arena, one of them is the uh, Jihadi forum take them. They find out and they have an internal discussion within their uh, uh, people that uh, uh, most of their jihadi forums were attacked and were taken down by uh, Western society. So they try to find out uh, what are the uh, answers, what should be the policy that they can use uh, to deal with this uh, uh, component. On the other side, during 2013 and afterward 2014, we find them that they carried out what we call the financial warfare against banking systems. Some of them was connected in some of the areas to uh, uh, jihadi groups and uh, other uh, people. The next uh, phenomenon that we find that everyone in the field, is it ISIS or Al-Qaeda, has a smartphone. Meaning everything changed because everyone has a computer in his hand. So what they need to do is not just deal with the story of the uh, you know, website or forum, they need to deal with the story of the smartphone because everyone became uh, a somebody that have this kind in his hand. These are uh, uh, a trend continue inside these uh, uh, 2014. And what we found in 2014, that more and more uh, software that was uh, uh, published by the jihadi groups that enabled them to deal with uh, security. It was Asrar al-Mujahideen, meaning the secret of the Mujahideen. It was Asrar al-Ghuraba, meaning the secret of the foreigners. And it was Asrar al-Dardasha, meaning uh, a ch secret chat rooms or secret chat. 
Meaning you will find out that they uh, didn't uh, take uh, a software from the shelf, they published their own software during this time. They developed during the years and uh, when they uh, became more sophisticated, they took software from the shelf and used it for their uh, purposes. So we have these kinds of trends within 2014. The second area that we saw uh, a very uh, important development in the technology capabilities was the, what we call the defense area. Why I'm saying it was uh, important uh, uh, within this field? Because for defense, you need technical capabilities. And you can find out that they published a lot of technical issues courses, manual, uh, software, uh, for the personal level and for, for the organizational level. Meaning you can understand, and it was uh, something that we saw during the years, they established technical sectors within the organization themselves. They gave answers about technical issues. Meaning they understand how to take the new technology and to use the new technology and to take to have the ability that everyone that is dealing with this field has the tools to deal with some kind of risk or attacks on his uh, entities. So they deal, it, deal with these uh, areas in the level of the organizations and in the level of the personnel. Knowledge and software not only a knowledge, not only courses, but also uh, software that publish for this uh, organization. They published an alert from time to time because they know that they are under surveillance and they are under attack and all these kinds of topics. So they published an alert and this was uh, delivered by their organization. What we can see that uh, during 2015, we start to see the changes within the behavior of the uh, uh, jihadist group entering into the social network, entering into the open social uh, uh, network. And what we can see in this uh, uh, process that uh, uh, at the end of 2015, there were an entrance into an encrypted social network, not only an open social network, an encrypted to the telegram. Why? Because they suffer during this time, during this time, during the year, they suffer from uh, a campaign or counter campaign against the social networks operation uh, in this uh, area. During this time, uh, in 2015, we see hacking operation, but it was not so sophisticated. DDoS defacement, uh, taking information from website of uh, regarding, you know, addresses, uh, emails, numbers, what we called killing list, or they called killing list. It was not so sophisticated operation that was carried out by uh, this organization. So what we can say that in 2015, increasing in the numbers of official and unofficial Twitter and Facebook accounts, we enter into a, a field that a, a jihadi groups, it could be a media outlet, it could be a, a digital magazine, it could be a, a jihadi forums, that they said, we have our information published on Twitter, this is our official account in Twitter, our official account in Telegram, and our official account in Facebook. Meaning they use uh, uh, this uh, social network to promote their uh, a publication. And if you open the jihadi forums during this time, you see all the links that uh, you can find their information in a different places. Meaning they understood that they can use the social network to deliver the messages. This was the idea uh, behind it. What happened in 2015 when they, as their use in the social network grow, they grew, they, uh, entire community, the international community find out that they need to find tools to counter their operations on the social network. So we see the start of the uh, a process of building a policy against these organizations. 
direct policy by state that establishing capabilities in level of in the level of the state and indirect policy by state pushing the giant groups twitter facebook to the corner asking them to take this uh, uh, information of the jihadists from the uh, uh, internet so we see when they the, the reality of being uh, a, an organization that use the uh, a jihadi uh, a website that were uploaded to the uh, social networks, uh, this caused a counter campaign by the international community. We start to deal with this phenomenon. So what we can say that uh, in the late 2015, use of social network by ISIS became clear. International systems start to develop capabilities to deal with ISIS. Here you have a pictures of the killing list. You can see they enter into this uh, uh, a website. They took the names of the people. They publish it. And they send that their people to carry out some operations against these uh, uh, names. 2016, uh, one of the things that they uh, uh, faced, because they were exposed now to the counter campaign of the Western society against the social network, they tried to find ways to continue to operate on the social, uh, social network and facing the challenging, the challenges of the uh, uh, Western communities against uh, uh, their operation. During these times, we saw, we saw the uh, foundation, the establishment of uh, a cyber uh, groups. The, the most well-known and important uh, cyber terror groups was UCC, United Cyber Caliphate. They established capabilities, uh, hackers from different areas. They are working together and promoting uh, the operations of uh, uh, this, uh, the cyber caliphate. Uh, they try to use uh, a different uh, uh, technology like zero net technology. They enter into the dark net, meaning they try to find out what are the tools that enable them to cope with the, uh, uh, a new threat from the uh, Western societies. And regarding cyber attack in 2016 and 2017, they continue the same system, the same method of cyber attack. DDoS operation, defacement operation, killing list, uh, and uh, very small uh, 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 ways that, or technology, you don't need a very important technology or high tech uh, a technology to uh, deal with this phenomenon. Everything that they did, they published on the internet, so you see a lot of uh, pictures and posts of the cyber caliphate saying we uh, uh, carried out this operation, we, defame, we carried out a defacement operation, and we will find you everywhere. Meaning you find out when ISIS enter into the game within the cyber arena, you will find more and more threat to the Western societies. Meaning we will attack uh, education system, we will attack military installation, we will attack all these uh, other components. The next component that we see, this is the legal action that was taken by the entire international community against these operations of the jihadists by, as I mentioned before, pushing the corner, the uh, 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 biggest companies that have the social network capabilities. 2017, you know, if you remember the situation of ISIS, 2017, ISIS started to be in a very major hardship, started to lose his uh, uh, territories, and it influenced the capability of ISIS to run his operation on the social network. So during 2017, he needed to spend a lot of effort, specifically uh, at the end of 2017, after Raqqa is fall, he needed to spend a lot of effort to build again and to support these capabilities on the ground within the social uh, networks uh, operations. He need to build again or rebuild the ISIS communication system. In most cases, you will find it not based on ISIS uh, official uh, entities. You will find ISIS supporters. 
And ISIS supporters is a body that is dealing until today with the ISIS uh, uh, propaganda supporting uh, these uh, organization. What they try to do, they try to enter into Telegram as a major uh, a platform for their uh, operations and to leverage some of the technologies uh, uh, to deal with these uh, organization operations. So we find out that in 2017, although we are talking about ISIS, a, a well uh, that has uh, uh, capabilities within the level of the technology within 2017, we didn't see a major uh, offensive attack that would run through the internet by ISIS. Meaning we couldn't say, although they have a lot of threat that we are going to do this and we are going to do this, it was not uh, a, a major attack that was carried by ISIS during, the, uh, during this time. 2018, 2019, we see uh, more uh, a tools that show us that they have an ability to have a solution for the uh, attack that was carried out on the social network. One of the solutions, they call it Bank El Ansar, meaning ISIS strategy to deal with the social network accounts that take down, meaning they have a reserve account. When an account takes down, they have a reserve account that they use to uh, 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 bypass uh, this uh, operation. Next uh, area that they enter, and we discuss it. Now, why no one stop me saying time is over? You are very quiet. Next uh, uh, area, I will finish within one minute. Next area that they uh, uh, counter or try to deal with this is the Bitcoin issues. We saw, you saw it uh, in the previous presentation, how they uh, uh, change their uh, use of uh, bringing money to the organization into the field of using Bitcoin. You have uh, a Bitcoin campaign. Everyone was within Bitcoin campaign from people in the, uh, from ISIS, Al Qaeda, uh, uh, jihadi groups in the uh, in the Middle East, like Hamas, like Hezbollah and others. This is one of the things that they try to uh, take. Defense, they continue their operation within the defense arena. They continue their uh, operation within the offense arena, meaning we can say that even we are in 2019, ISIS and Al-Qaeda didn't find uh, the capabilities, uh, uh, the knowledge uh, uh, to carry out a major attack. They, stay, they continue uh, killing lists, DDoS, defacement, and uh, trying to uh, threat that they will attack education systems. So it takes me down to my question. So what is real answer to uh, 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 this kind of question why we couldn't see until today capabilities of a jihadi group to uh, uh, carry out uh, a attack uh, during the internet? Although we see development of the technical capabilities, we see cooperation, we see other issues, we didn't see really a major attack that was carried out by this uh, organization. And although we didn't see this kind of attack, and although we said that their capabilities is very low within this field, I think, or I suggest that my work, our work assumption should be that terrorist organization have an offense capabilities. They will use them maybe when they decide, maybe when the uh, opportunity uh, uh, presents itself or maybe when they will be in a very, a very problematic situation as a surveillance of, uh, or something like this. I stop here with my presentation. And uh, how many times? You have uh, a still the courage or the uh, patience for 10 minutes questions, or you want to go out? What do you say? Ah, you have a question. Okay. Panel, come here. Let's see, have uh, a 10 minutes question for the people that still survive, and then we'll 
Fenes. Uh, this is mainly aimed at you, Eitan, but of course anyone else is welcome to comment. I've been coming to this conference for I forget how many years, and I've been hearing a lot of the same things. Okay. And, and I'm not saying this is a, a deficiency on your part. I think it's actually a comment on what's really happening in the world of the jihad or terrorism or whatever. There's a great deal of talk about the use of the internet and technology and so on. Actually, much less seems to be happening, at least much less that we know about in the world, than has been threatened. There's this big bombastic statement about the Minister of War. The microphone, we can't hear. Okay. There's this big bombastic statement by the Minister of War of uh, yeah. uh, Daesh in Iraq about what kind of attacks they're going to yeah. carry out. What yeah. has actually happened? Not a hell of a lot. Yeah. Not only that, but if we, we look at what your excellent analysis of what has happened in terms of the, the changing use of technology and the changing world of technology in fighting the jihad. Actually, the technology world has been changing autonomously, independently of the needs of the jihadis. And the jihadis have been taking advantage of new technology platforms such as Telegram. In the same way as I have, and I'm not even a jihadi. Um, so I think that in a certain way you're misinterpreting what's happening. That the world of technology... We are misinterpreting mis yes. what's happening? Yes, okay. I think so. I think that what's really happening is that in the same way as everyone else, including ordinary fraudsters and so on and so forth, is taking advantage of new things happening in the world of the internet and associated technologies. So the jihadis are doing the same thing and perhaps other terror groups that we're not even discussing here, ones that are in other parts of the world, in South America or in Sri Lanka or whatever, and they see there's this new cool thing called telegram or signal or whatever, ah, we can take advantage of this, it's going to make our communications more secret. I remember when a few years ago we were still talking about how the jihadis had their own uh, communications platform using public-private encryption. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about. I mean, it's yeah. being advertised all over the magazines and so on. And people, I presume, were using it. So now it's much easier because you've got a, okay. a commercially available or freely available okay. tool. I think uh, that this is what's really happening. I try to understand. Yeah. The so, the <laughs> so, so, so. We haven't got. No. Okay. Uh, hey. So the. the next all right. Uh, well, maybe the, I'll discuss this with Aitan afterwards. Um, no. The the point of the, the question is, is it possible that you're not looking at the phenomenon in the wrong way? Okay. Somebody here want to answer to uh, support me? Uh, you don't want to support I me? I will. Okay. Uh, I really was th actually thrilled with Eitan's uh, description of the progress and the what's taken place uh, which I thought is an enormous uh, contribution to the discussion. Uh, and we've looked at some of the same things uh, within the government. And, you know, some of the, uh, I guess, the unanswered question, Aitan is really addressing this. And one of the things you may want to think about is what resources have they got and what staffing and manpower have they got? And we don't have an answer to that. I mean, we had old estimates. Uh, we, we have the same problem in the U.S. government in terms of shortage of people. Uh, one of the things that's, uh, I think, going on, Eitan may uh, want to, you know, comment a bit more, is uh, it's not just that Raqqa fell and a bunch of these guys got squashed and blown off the face of the earth. Uh, they may be suffering a, a shortage of tech manpower. And I don't know, really know what the resource for that tech manpower is. And they're using what they can, but they may just be running short on resources. Okay. I don't thank, know. thank you. I, of fish swimming in one direction and one fish swimming in the other direction and the caption says what if I'm wrong yes we could be looking at the problem from the wrong perspective however 
all of the great things that you can do in this domain, uh, let's just call it uh, the cyberspace domain, all of the positive things, all the healthcare benefits, all, the, uh, all of them are wonderful, but man is inherently evil, and therefore someone will turn all of that goodness into an offensive destructive capability. And I can't make the assumption that they haven't, they won't, or they don't have the capacity to do so. Yeah. I, I'm, okay, so yeah, let's, let's. Wait, Rami, Rami, Rami Strati wants want to. You see, I have a lot of supporters here. <laughs> okay. Real quick question. Uh, Dr. Wagner, do you see at some point this uh, technology that you have, that, you know, the groundbreaking uh, study that you're talking about, do you see that working its way into a uh, civilian kind of capacity in terms of marketing? It already has. Um, one of the things I didn't mention, and we took it over, uh, the marketing people have been the first ones to adopt the eye tracking technology. Uh, you can buy an eye tracking uh, system from the Canadian guys for about 45K. Uh, buying a 3T scanner, you're talking 5 million, and they're not going to do it. And you have to have a team of people to run the thing. Uh, but we adopted the eye tracking stuff from the marketing guys and built the software to tie it to the fMRI. Marketing guys are not going to run a, a, a huge uh, MRI lab. But the eye tracking stuff works. It's phenomenal. And we, the other thing that we didn't talk about, uh, we've used some other uh, physiological measures uh, for any of you that have taken a polygraph uh, in terms of the heart rate monitors, the, uh, the breath, the, uh, you know, the, uh, the lung monitors and all that stuff. We've got that stuff hooked up too, but I didn't talk about it, just to see what the data look like. Okay, your question. Yeah, my question is to Brigadier General uh, Rami Efrati. This is regarding the 5G technology which you spoke about. Uh, do you feel that uh, once the 5G technology comes, law enforcement agencies are going to have a tough time because of the uh, network architecture of 5G, which is sliced in nature, and uh, the database being fluid, in cloud from one place to another, multiple service providers involved in one uh, single uh, transaction or uh, uh, communication. So are we prepared to tackle that or are we going in, uh, taking a dip into this and allowing the uh, negative forces to take advantage of 5G? Uh, I believe that there are solutions to uh, secure 5G. I believe that this is going to be one, the best way will be to deal with uh, private networks take a slice and uh, secure it. As a matter of fact, I'm working on this already. As for the law enforcement, I believe that there will be a special uh, protocol that will allow law enforcement to monitor. Although while we are doing with uh, 5G, there is not anymore any kind of IMSI. Uh, there is the SUBI, or I don't remember the name, but I believe there will be a solution. Anyhow, people did it, and people will come with solutions. I believe that only the right regulations by law enforcement will allow, which will enable it to be done very quickly. Okay, next question. Thanks, hey Microphone is there. Ah. Hey guys, thanks a lot for uh, providing us with your wisdom and with your experience. Um, quick question, it's more of a philosophical one. Um, in regards to cyber terrorism, is it, maybe it, to ask if it's acceptable is maybe not the best question, but um, your opinions, if you're willing to share on <coughs> other actors, non-state, on the web, conducting their own, perhaps, terrorism on ISIS and other Islamic extremists or other forms of dangerous terrorism and radicals who are operating all over the web, whether it be the deep, the dark, the, uh, the regular web that we all know and I guess sometimes love, sometimes hate. Um, your opinions on people conducting um, maybe revenge attacks on ISIS or on these people, if someone's willing to share? Philosophically, I can't separate terrorism from an entity. Terrorism, violence against civilian population. Regardless of who does it, it fits in the category of terrorism. I should perhaps correct myself, it'll be a little better. Um, conducting terroristic attacks against members of ISIS or other terrorist organizations, you know, if, someone to conduct some sort of, um, to steal their cryptocurrencies or something like that, or any sort of cyber attack against these uh, bad so, actors. So an independent entity taking uh, uh, some level of offensive cyber operations against a terrorist entity? Let's just say John Smith, 
you know, hooks yeah. up his laptop, has his exploit tools. Philos and Philosophically, I don't believe independent actors should take uh, actions that the state is uh, responsible for taking, and that's just my. There, is, there, there is a growing literature in what's called cyber vigilantes, and if you sort of Google that, you'll see what's been. I mean, that's a discussion going on within the United States, sort of unrelated to the terrorism problem. But generically, you're talking about cyber vigilantes, and I just encourage you to Google the thing. There's a pretty good literature on that. Okay, thank you very much. I think that is based on the state law. It, every state has its own law, so it's not international issues. And with this, I'm closing this session. If somebody has, I know, if somebody has questions, come to us and ask us questions. And thank you very much for your survivability. Thank you, sir.